In this uh, lecture, um, I want to give some motivation for the uh, the nodal and the mesh analysis, two different uh, analysis techniques that we will use to analyze uh, basic DC circuits or basic circuits. Period. But before diving into those specific techniques, I want to motivate it and uh, kind of think uh, at, a, at a higher level. Uh, what we're doing and how to best go about it. Uh, there are some brute force methods that we can use and then there's some smarter methods to use. So we're going to just kind of go through uh, a, th a path, a reasoning path that will lead us to uh, the use of what is known as nodal analysis and mesh analysis and then in future lectures uh, we'll work through examples and develop both those techniques. But this is a high-level view. You should gain an appreciation for where we're headed uh, from this, uh, this lecture. So our objective is to solve for one or more node voltages and or mesh currents in a circuit. So here you've got the circuit in front of you, and maybe you've been asked about what's the voltage across resistor R5, or what's the current flowing through this voltage source. Or maybe you're asked for a number of different currents or voltages. So to answer that, you have to solve um, the equations of motion, so to speak, for that circuit. So what's the process? Well, you write n equations, and then you solve for n unknowns. And we have no idea what, how, what's n. How many equations do we have to write for a certain circuit? And that, that will become clear as we go. But the process ultimately is that you're going to have n, n equations, and you'll be solving for n unknowns. In this class, we'll not solve by hand any uh, systems of equations that is larger than three, and probably only do that a few times. Um, and for systems larger than that, we end up using uh, some kind of computer tool to help. All right, so what do we have to use at our disposal? Well, we've already talked about the conservation laws, right? KVL, KCL, that's conservation of energy, conservation of charge. Right, that's the first thing we have. Second thing we have is we have element laws. So in other words, the terminal characteristics or the VI characteristics of our uh, of each element. In the case of a resistor, well, we got Ohm's law, F equal or V equals IR. Um, here I have F equals MA because this applies to other domains besides electrical. So if you had a mass, that's an element, and it has a quote unquote terminal. Uh, relationship relating force and acceleration, or spring has a relation between force and uh, a displacement here. And um, I have the words effort and flow. I'll talk about that more later, but just kind of put a little plug for that now. No matter what domain you're in, so in other words, electrical, mechanical, thermal, fluids, etc., there is always a variable that is associated with effort and one that's associated with flow. Okay, and that helps to make uh, analogs, if you will, between these different domains. So, mechanically, you think of force as an effort, oh, pushing really hard, okay? And the flow is like displacement, velocity, acceleration, okay? Uh, typically, we'll, we'll use velocity as the flow. So, you apply an effort and you get some flow. Um, electrically, the effort is the voltage. You apply this big voltage across the resistor and you get some flow of current. Okay, So in general when we have some element, uh, no matter the domain, we can talk about an effort to flow relationship. If you put so much effort into or apply so much effort onto this element, what's its response in terms of flow? And again, for circuits we're talking about if you apply a certain voltage, what is the current that flows? and what's that relationship. Okay, so the first method that we might go about uh, in solving for uh, the currents and voltages in a circuit is just the brute force method. All right, so here's a little circuit. Um, it has, looks like uh, three nodes, A, B, C, plus a ground node, which I haven't labeled, I put a little ground symbol. Okay, so four nodes. But as we've talked about before, we can only determine voltage relative to some reference. Okay, just like you can altitude uh, is relative to typically sea level. So uh, if we have four nodes, we really only solve for the voltage of three of them, n minus one, because one of them will be deemed a reference node. 
and uh, in this case I've chosen the one that's down at the bottom. So there are three voltages to solve for in terms of three node voltages to solve for. Um, there are uh, also three, and I have loops, I should say meshes, those are three meshes, all right, because there are actually more than three loops. Remember, a mesh is a loop that has no other uh, loops inside it. So we have three nodes that we need to solve for. We have three meshes, the currents in those three meshes, and we have uh, six element laws. Okay, so I'm adding up how many equations we have at our disposal. Now, if I have three nodes, I can write a KCL equation at each node. Right? So I can write a KCL at node A, KCL at node B, KCL at node C, and I can write KVL for each mesh. Okay, That would give me three or six equations. Plus, I've got the VI relationship for each of those elements. Right? So for instance, the voltage across R1, or I'm sorry, the current through R1 is equal to the voltage across R1 divided by R1. Right? And... Um, so I have a total of 12 equations. And I have six elements, right? Five resistors and this voltage source. And each element has a voltage and a current associated with it. So there are actually 12 unknowns, six voltages, six currents. So if I just go brute force, we, for this little circuit, we could be stuck writing 12 equations and solving for 12 unknowns. And that is that is undesired. We don't want to even go there. Okay? So in the remainder of this um, lecture, we'll make a case, I will make a case for how we only need to write, um, ultimately, three equations. All right? And solve for three unknowns. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first, let's dump the Vs. All right? or dump the i's. So since element laws relate v and i for each element, we really need only find the v's or the i's, then we only have six unknowns. So it's true in the end, like if I know there's three volts across R1, I still have to calculate the current through R1, but that's trivial to do, right? There's no reason to throw that in the mix of my n equations and n unknowns. I can just solve for my six voltages, and then I can solve for the currents by looking at each voltage and, um, and dividing it by the resistance, at least the five there for the R1 through R5. Okay, so that would reduce the number of equations, but it's still six. That's too many. All right, so now let's get smart about this. All right, the circuit has three nodes plus the reference node. We call them A, B, and C and they have three voltages associated with them, VA, VB, VC. Okay, if VA, VB, and VC are found, and this is my claim, if, if we find A, VA, VB, and VC, then all six branch voltages can be expressed in terms of these three node voltages. All right, so let's look at that. Let's think about uh, R1. Now, I haven't shown the, note, the polarity of R1, but for voltage of R1, but let's just say this was this was VR1. Okay, well, VR1 can be expressed, can it not, in terms of the node voltages. It's going to be the voltage at node B, because that's uh, node B is uh, the node to which R1 is connected down in its positive terminal, minus VA. Okay, so if I know VA and VB, I can very easily write VR1. Okay, and the case can be made for all of these. So rather than having to worry initially about knowing about six voltages, really, I just need to know about three voltages. One voltage for each node, or I need to know, I need to know N minus one node voltages, right? Four minus one, or three node voltages. Wow, that simplifies things a lot, right? So now we need only write three node equations and solve for the three unknown node voltages. Now granted, we, we still don't know the currents, right? So before we can calculate the currents, 
through each of these branches, we're going to have to determine the branch voltages, like VR1, VR4, VR3. And then we're going to have to use Ohm's law, the element law, to calculate the current. But see how we've kind of separated that. We haven't thrown everything in one pot and said, we've got 12 equations and 12 unknowns. We would be making you know, way too much work for ourselves. So this is comforting. We only need to do a three, solve a system of three equations. All right, so now let's, uh, let's look at getting smart again. And this is a different approach now. Instead of looking at the node voltages, uh, let's look at the mesh current. So the circuit has three meshes. And a mesh current can be defined for each, um, as we'll call it, I1, I2, and I3. So uh, this guy right here is I1, right? I1, I2, I3. And, okay, so I see now that I've actually... Um, mm -hmm. Okay, oh, I've, in this diagram I've, I've shown... Uh, I R1 to be pointing down. So let me let me be consistent. I'll use passive sign convention. Let me uh, switch this up a little bit here, and I will say V A minus V B. There. Okay. I just want to be consistent with the passive sign convention because that's what I've told you to use. So now I, I have this current I R1 uh, right here that is pointing down into uh, down through R1. And here's the claim. If you know all three mesh currents, then you actually know the current through every branch in the circuit. How does that work? Let's look at the current through R1. Okay, The, R, the current R1 is actually the net current through R1 is, is actually the superposition of or the, the, yeah, the superposition of two currents. It's the net um, result of two currents flowing through that resistor R1. One of them is I1 and that flows in the same direction as IR1 and the other one is I2 which flows in the opposite direction. So we can write that IR1 is actually I1 minus I2. This is completely analogous or dual to uh, being able to write the branch voltages using uh, the node voltages in the circuit. So now we need only write three mesh equations, in other words, KVL around three meshes, and then solve for the three mesh currents. Okay, so we have two different methods. And the second method will be what we call the mesh analysis. And the first method here, um, number six, will be called nodal analysis. So this will be nodal analysis because we're going to be solving for the node voltages and the second one is going to be mesh analysis. They both solve the same problem but they go about um, about it through two paths. The first one solving for node voltages and then calculating currents if you need currents or branch voltages and the second you're using mesh currents to then find branch currents uh, and possibly uh, node voltages or branch voltages. Okay. Now, is this really necessary? Uh, not always. Okay. So here are some times when it's not necessary. We still want to avoid the work. We're engineers. We want to be expedient. We want to use our intuition. We're sometimes lazy. Uh, no, we have things to design, things to solve, and so we don't want to waste time on uh, activities that are not necessary. So. <clears throat> There are several scenarios when we don't need to use these um, techniques. So one, uh, there are a couple trivial circuits. One is the single loop, right? When there's there's only one loop, one mesh, okay, and just a bunch of elements in series, or a single node pair circuit. That's where there's just a bunch of elements in parallel, and there are only two nodes. So in the first case, there's one mesh, one current to solve for, and in the second case, there's one node voltage to solve for, right? You have the reference node, and then say node A, and you're solving for node, the voltage of node A. Secondly, uh, when circuit simplification can be judiciously applied, so sometimes you can, well actually a lot of times, you can take a circuit that's initially not a single loop or single node pair circuit, and you can convert it into something that's a single loop or single node pair. Uh, 
All right, so now you've trivialized the circuit, and if you reduce it to one node pair or one loop, you, the, the process is, is very simple. I mean, you're still, you're still doing KVL or KCL, but just one time, one unknown. When very, third, when various network reduction techniques are used, and we'll spend a whole uh, period of time after this section on nodal and mesh analysis to uh, further develop uh, some tricks, if you will, that allow us to simplify a network, a circuit, um, so that we can get we can reduce the number of nodes and the number of meshes in, in the hopes that we have fewer equations, fewer unknowns to solve for. So sometimes you can get that down to just a single loop or a single node. And then sometimes also when there's when there's you have good intuition, uh, you can um, you can avoid writing. Uh, you know, and turning the crank, you know, brute force doing uh, n equations and unknowns. So, uh, and and truthfully, um, after you learn this technique of of doing, you know, the formal nodal or mesh analysis, much of the analysis that we do, we we try to avoid, or we are able, oftentimes, to avoid multi-node or multi-mesh circuits. So, like for instance, we teach a class in advanced electronics, and in that course. I don't know that we ever used uh, a formal n equations and n unknowns. Even though if you looked at the circuits, they were they had many nodes and, and many meshes. But we were able to tr use uh, you know intuition and different tricks to reduce the network or the circuit so that we could just solve the the circuit uh, by looking at a single mesh or a single node. Okay, so don't despair. You don't have to do n equations and unknowns uh, for as long as you do uh, you know circuits. All right, so w let's look finally at um, the single loop circuits and single node pair circuits. So as just a couple of summary statements. In a single loop circuit, there's just one KVL equation to write with one unknown current, I. So although you may have, say, a dozen elements in series and they each have a voltage, a branch voltage, you don't need to include those in your N equations. If you know the current, Using the element law for each of those elements, you can then calculate the voltage across that element using the current. So there's only one unknown, the current. Uh, and then a lot of times you can combine light components in series. So for instance, if you have a dozen components, but like, you know, seven of them are resistors, well, you can combine all of them together and you effectively have one resistor. And that's all you need to know to solve for the current. You need to know the net resistance. If later you want to know well, how much, how many volts is across this one particular resistor, then yes, then you need to look at the value of that one resistor, not all seven, and do R times I to get the voltage. Finally, for single node pair circuits, there's just one KCL equation to write with one unknown node voltage. Right? So if one node is uh, referenced and the other nodes call it A, we'd just be solving for VA. And um, we can again combine like components in parallel. So if you have three resistors in parallel, you could just combine them um, into one effective resistor. And there, as we've mentioned before, it's easiest to, to combine parallel resistances by adding their conductances. So you have R1 or G1, G2, G3. You just you sum them together to get one effective uh, inductance or in, uh, conductance. And then um, you can use that to, uh, to simplify your single equation that you're going to use to solve for that one unknown node voltage VA. Next we'll, uh, we'll have, uh, I'll have a follow-on lecture actually working through some problems to show you the technique.